Welcome back to the channel. So this is gonna be part three of the wiring series on the Camaro. This one's gonna be all about relay panels and the wiring harnesses, so let's dig in. Okay, I almost forgot about you guys. Not really, but I was just getting to work and I was like, oh man, I need to record this. Everyone's gonna wanna know what's going on here. So I started making the carbon relay board, wiring board, whatever you wanna call it. Um, this is gonna house the fuses and the relays and then his relay board that's gonna control like the pump and lights and stuff like that. Ignition and starter as well is gonna be run through this relay board. So I was going through and first I started off with a piece of like cardboard type stuff. Um, I measured it out, put it up where I wanted it in the car, you know, it's up underneath the dash. And I was just kind of going through it, trying to figure out how I want to do it. I had it figured out 18 inches, 10 inches, had it planned out. And then I started putting the relay and the fuses on from the harnesses and they were taking up more room than I thought. So I had to extend this, this is now 24 inches big. Um, still 10 inches high and then I'm going to mount it in three spots. I'm just about to do that so I'll show you that. I'm just going to weld some tabs on the cage. The cage behind the dash wasn't clear coated. It's just rough color so I can clean off a little area, weld it, and then just touch it up. Be no big deal. So I was going through here. I use these um, nut certs on these. You can get these eBay, Amazon. I'm sure some other places have them. They're just little. They're almost like a rivet. Um, Riv nuts is maybe what they're called. I don't know, but you can find them and then they have this tool. What's this tool? Let me see if I can actually find Um, doesn't say oh riv nut. Yeah, so they're riv nuts Um, but then this tool you screw it in there You drill the hole and then you pull it like a rivet gun and it expands and it holds it in there And then it gives you threads really handy for carbon fiber and a bunch of other stuff Actually, uh, we use them all the time on the cars to mount stuff. You can drill a hole in like the frame put one of the rib nuts there and then now you got threads right there. So if you can't get to the backside for a nut, it's really handy. And it, it cleans it up so you don't have to get a, a wrench on the backside if you need to take something off. Anyways, I digress. So um, I use nut certs on all of these for the fuses. Um, he has, I guess we should talk about this real quick. These are the Fuel Tech Pro harnesses. These are really nice. So this is like way nicer than just like a plug and play harness that you would get. These have really nice sheathing on them. They have all the relays and everything done. And then they actually label the relays um, or label each connector really. And they're super nice. They have bulkheads on them already. So we're gonna go through this as we put these on the car um, and you'll learn more about these, but they have the relay and fuse and I want these accessible. So if you think, you know, you blow a fuse or you got a bad relay, it's right there. It's labeled, it's on a board. You can change it quickly instead of digging through trying to find it. So I have these, um, and you can kind of see, can you see? Yeah, you can kind of see. Um, I have these, so they're gonna be spaced out like that, and then they're all gonna be laid across there. We have five total, two in the main harness, two in the coil harness, and then one in the injector harness. So that's where all these are gonna be, and then you know the wires are gonna come underneath and then fold up back behind and attach to the roll, roll cage. And then same with this, we'll have plenty of spots to guide all these wires that come off the relay panel onto the roll cage as well. So that's kind of, you know, how I thought process and lay this out um, as I get going. So uh, let, let's keep rock and rolling and get this uh, installed, I guess. And there is the test fit panel in the car. Um, this is a test fit. Let's keep that in mind very much. But it looks pretty good. I'll have these wires. You know, I think I'll put some stuff right here to be able to zip time to keep them nice and straight this uh this uh bunching up drives me crazy but i think it looks good like you can see what each one is it, they're accessible you know I, I think this is uh the look i'm going for as well i think it's gonna look good i mean it's not gonna be on display the dash is gonna cover this so i don't want to get caught up too much in making it look super ocd but I want it organized, clean, and, you know, thoughtful. And then, you know, there's the board there. So I just got three tabs. You know, there's three bolts holding up. I'm going to get some nicer bolts to put on it. But, yeah, I think it's going to be good. And then all the wires can loop right around back. 
and it'll come up here and I can zip time up to the roll cage. I can route riders behind this bar, our power's down here. So we have access to everything we need. All the firewall bulkheads are you know, gonna be right behind this going out to the engine bay. So I think this is convenient. You know, the main plugs go over there. I, I, I think this is gonna work. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. What do you guys think? I mean, who doesn't love a carbon wiring panel? Like, it looks awesome. Like, and it already cleaned up the wiring a hundred times. Like, it, I think these pro harnesses are actually going to be pretty, pretty convenient to lay out throughout the car and hook up. I'm a little worried about extra length, but I think we can uh, do a good job with it. I'm looking forward to it. I have got a good mess going on here, but I'm just trying to plan out what harnesses are going where and where I want the bulkheads to go. So this one's the main engine harness. Um, this goes, you know, oil pressure, throttle oil position, crank, cam sensors, that handles, I mean, pretty much everything. It also has the primary set of injectors in it as well. Um, it's all done. I guess this is some stuff that's not needed. Um, it was zip tied up, but anyways, so the bulkhead, so I'm just trying to plan where I'm going to put this bulkhead. I um, have to keep in mind these valve covers need to come off a bunch as a solid roller setup. So I need this up out of the way, but still where it can get to everything. So I think I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to put it all the way to the right. Let's see if that'll focus. All the way to the right or in the middle. I haven't determined. Um, it's going, I think, somewhere over here. I don't think I want to put it on the actual firewall. Um, I think I do want to put it over there. And yeah, just kind of trying to plan out. I also got the coils mounted. We could not find a good spot for the coils. We want to put the catch cans here. Um, just couldn't find anywhere great to put the coils. Thought about some fender wells or inside the fender wells, but I ended up, so they'd cut the cowl on this car to fit the intake on it. Well, I got to look in. There's some room back in there. Ta-da! So there's the coils. I got them. They're actually mounted back there and plugged in. The harness is plugged in. Those two leads coming off are for the cylinder head grounds. But And then there's a bulkhead. Let me see. Yep, here's the bulkhead for the coils. So I think I'm going to put this somewhere over here so you can access it easily. Um, and then also, if you have to work on this at the track or for whatever reason, if you need to get the coils out, they actually bolt it from the inside and you can snake them out that hole over there. So um, they're accessible, even with the intake on. I mean, it's not the easiest, but it's accessible. And then the plug wires, I'll be able to just group them up and come down the valve covers and plug them all in. I think it's gonna be super clean. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's outside the box thinking, but back to the harnesses. Um, it's just kind of showing you where I'm at, where my thought process is. Um, I actually have the harness board down inside the car in there and just kind of working through everything. I went ahead and put the intake back on. It's not bolted or anything, but just, just setting it there. I wanted to make sure the harness and all the water lines and everything fit underneath the intake good. It does, no problems. I also wanted to test fit the bulkhead back here. This is an old panel. We have a brand new one that we're going to do once I figure out where everything goes. But I'm starting to think there was a hole here. Um, so I'm starting to think this is where I want the bulkheads. So I was going to test fit them. This is the main engine harness. I just put it up there. It's not bolted or anything. But then I'm thinking I may put one of the other bulkheads here and the other bulkhead here. I have, I actually brought the coil bulkhead here. So I'm thinking I'll be able to plug him in right there. And then the other injector harness can go right next to it. Um, and then I was plugging this one in. I was wanting to check lengths, so I'm kind of going through and plugging everything in, seeing where it goes, you know, cranks and fuel pressure and the throttle and just kind of going every, through everything, making sure it all reaches and plugs in. The injectors obviously will all plug in. They're out the front, so they're plenty long. I'm just kind of going through everything, making sure what I'm thinking of doing is going to work. And so far, I think I feel pretty good about it. So I'm going to go ahead and drill the other holes for the other bulkheads and kind of hook them up and make sure we like what's going on with everything. And then I think I'm going to move on the inside and start trying to tidy and routing some up the harness and just kind of go from there. So I was going through and finishing up the bulkheads. I ended up putting all three right here. I think it turned out pretty good. They're accessible, out of the way for the valve cover. 
Um, I have this one. These are the EGTs down here. Um, this one's not mounted because they rivet in and this isn't the right panel, but you can see where that one's going to go. Cleans it up a lot. This one's done as well. That one looks really good and it really tidies up the EGT. So they just go straight back through the firewall and then I put the controller for the EGTs inside. I've also been going through and setting up the lengths for a lot of this stuff. What's nice about having a big old LS intake that sits up really high is you can kind of set your lengths and zip tie up your excess out of the way up here so it'll never be seen and then all your sensors have just the right length and it looks really clean keep on i still got a whole bunch of this that goes to the injectors and other stuff but let's move on to the inside and i'll kind of show you what i'm working with on the harnesses it may not look much different but i promise there's been tons of progress here you notice there's nothing hanging out really below it so I have everything, uh, kind of the harnesses routed. They're routed to the bulkhead behind there. Um, I don't know, yeah, you can kind of see where the wires go back to the bulkhead. All the harnesses are, um, you know, zip tied up and organized. It takes a lot of time just going through this and organizing all the harnesses behind there. Which ones need to go over to the ECU? Which wires need to come off to the battery? It's a lot of time organizing behind there, um, but I got it all done. One little trick I use, um, which you're probably not going to be able to see, so I brought an extra one, is these little guys. These are um, got sticky tape on the back, and they're little zip tie holders. So I clean the back of the carbon really good, and I put some of these on the back side, and then I can zip tie the harnesses and guide them and make sure these kind of stay where they're supposed to. And it just helps organize stuff. And then all the harnesses, you know, I've got zip tied up here really good. And also you can see over here, I'm gonna have some of these connectors up on the top. Um, so like if we ever need to diagnose stuff, we have access to them and they're not buried behind there. So once I, once I get, you know, cleaning up the harness this way, I'm gonna make sure all this is accessible. And then the last two harnesses I have to build for like all the shock sensors and drive shaft sensor and all that, that's all on these two connectors. So this one's the outputs, the yellow, and then this one is the inputs, the whites. These other ones, since he has the pro harnesses, um, if you're familiar with fuel tech, you'll notice one, um, they have outputs A and B. So output A here goes to the coils. So this is like the smart coil wiring. It gets auxiliary power from this as well. This is built into the main pro harness. And then the um, signals uh, just plug and play. And then outputs B, I believe this is for the secondary set of injectors. So they have all this pre-wired as well. So it just plugs and plays into their pro harness to their secondary injector harness. So they make it pretty nice. So if you're doing fuel tech, that's pretty cool. Um, that's a neat way to do it. And then since he's running high impedance injectors, he doesn't need to peek and hold injector driver boxes. Um, they sell these jumper cable, uh, kits that jump over the injector harness. This is normally where your peak and hold driver box would go if you're using something like a billet atomizer. But he has high impedance injectors, so we just need these jumpers to make sure they'll work. And then, yeah, I got a few harnesses over there that I'm not gonna use, so we're just gonna bundle those up and get those out of the way as much as possible. You can see I got all the EGT leads coming in here. I'm gonna mount the EGT box here shortly. And yeah, I'm getting really close to, I think, actually powering that up. I have the switch panel wire plugged in and routed. The switch panel is back in the car. It's grounded. It's ready to go. I need to find, I don't have the right crimp size for these, so I'm trying to find some crimp connections so I can hook up the relay board. I have the battery wires. Um, there they are. Those are the two power leads. Those I'm about to route back to the battery. Um, but yeah, I actually think we're really close to powering up the ECU and finishing up some of the harnesses. So hang tight. Hopefully we have some power soon. Okay, a little sidetrack, but this was not shown in the other video and I wanted to make sure it was shown here. Battery cut off, got it in, got it installed. How this works, it's a four post. So it works with an alternator. So how it works, these bottom two are the inputs. So this one's from the battery, this one's from the alternator. And then the outputs, which are, you know, a uh, circuit when the cutoff switch is on, would be the alternator charging, and then the output of the battery, which just goes up to the front distribution block. You'll see this is looped then, and that takes the output from the alternator and charges the battery with it. 
What's nice about this is it charges the battery when it's on, but when you turn it off, it loses the alternator signal and the battery signal. So then your alternator and your battery are disconnected and it'll actually shut off the car. A lot of people don't use these four posts when they're wiring up a car with an alternator. And a lot of times those cars won't actually turn off when you kill the power because the alternator will keep the car running. This ensures that that does not happen. So you can see it's a standard Moroso on off cutoff switch. So I haven't turned it on. We got a battery in here. Had to go get a loaner battery. That guy is no good. So got a battery and I'm going to turn it on for the first time. Uh, let's see what happens. I have not uh, turned this on. I probably should have tried this before I filmed it. So turn it on. Oh, we have lights. Man, the zoom on this is so slow. Okay, there you go. You see the lights. Let's go check a peak and see what's going on. So, I don't really know what all those lights mean. Hmm, that's a whole lot of lights though. So we got power. Is anything working on up here? Hmm, nothing here. Let's try the interior lights. Oh, okay, so the switch panel's working. What's that, lights? Hmm. So, switch panel's working. So, what happens? Where's the ignition? Ignition. Oh. Oh. Oh, buddy. Look at that. Houston, we are good to go. I think this is actually where we're going to stop with this video. I mean, you've seen I got majority of the harnesses kind of routed. My thought process on how I do it. Setting up the relay board and then powering everything up. So I think I'm going to kind of stop here on this one. It's a good spot because now I'm going to be getting the intake back on and plugging everything in and going through like first startup. So that I think that'll be a good next video. And then I think we have one more after that. So we'll have startup and then wiring the accessories. So we still have to do shock sensors, ride height sensor, drive shaft sensor, transmission sensors, like all the additional sensors that aren't included in the pro harness. That'll be, I think, the last video. So a few more parts, but I think this is a good spot to kind of wrap this one up and I'm gonna start getting to work so we can get this thing fired up in the next video. Be sure to stay tuned for the next one.